Rotary? Yes. Please, Mark. This Mark uh, is coming up. I met him yesterday at the Rotary uh, golf outing, and he said about this morning and what we were doing, and uh, he's very knowledgeable, and he's going to lay it out, not just uh, what happened on the day, but the situation building up to 9-11-2001. So, it's all yours, Mike. Mike. Thank you very much for having me here today, and I'm very humble. Uh, I'm not a history professor. I don't have a million degrees. Um, why I really research 9-11 is I talk to my nephews and nieces, and it's a great question you should ask the next generation. What do you know about 9-11? Why are we celebrating this today? And as years wear on, just like other major events in history, history tends to get, <clears throat> I know we'll never forget, but the future generations is so important to remember. Uh, I'm just going to go through it uh, you know, relatively shortly, 9-11. Um, it started back in the roots uh, when the Soviets invaded Afghanistan. Uh, they invaded Afghanistan and there were freedom fighters called the Mujahideen. And we decided with the CIA to help them, obviously because our number one enemy was the Soviet Union at the time, drive them out of Afghanistan. And we supplied them with weapons, we supplied them with what really turned the tide was Stinger missiles. And it shot the uh, Soviet helicopters away. So we helped them. And then moving forward, uh, we left because our mission was accomplished. It was uh, Afghanistan, and uh, you know we defeated the Soviets there. So moving forward, um, one of the freedom fighters, as we all know, was Osama bin Laden. And um, on August 2nd, 1990, Iraq decided to invade Kuwait. And Osama bin Laden came to the Saudi princess. This is our Mecca. This is our holy land. We want to come and do what we did in Afghanistan and defend our holy land. Please let us do it. And the Saudi princess said, don't call us, we'll call you. Bin Laden got very insulted by that. And uh, basically he did, looked at America as the enemy, decided to clear a fatwa against America in the late 90s. And if you remember, there were some attacks that were coming up. In 1998, the embassies in Kenya and Tanzania were attacked. In the year 2000, the USS Cole uh, was attacked. If you remember, there was another bombing in the World Trade Center in 1993. A man named Ramzi Youssef drove a rider truck with 1,500 pounds of explosives into the cellar of the World Trade Center. Thank God he didn't have enough money. Thank God he didn't have enough, uh, enough uh, explosives. That exploded. It took out six floors of the Sub World Trade Center. If that would have been successful, it probably would have killed 40 or 50,000 people that day. He wasn't successful. Thank God. And his uncle was a man named Khalid Sheikh Mohammed. Now Khalid Sheikh Mohammed and him had a conversation. I guess what they like to talk about was, was planning terrorist attacks, unfortunately. And they had a, an idea about a planes operation. We're going to blow up 12 planes over the Pacific Ocean. It was called the Bajointa Plot. This is about the mid-90s. Khalid Sheikh Mohammed was intrigued. He decided to take it to Osama bin Laden. Osama bin Laden was a multi-billionaire. He had a construction company that was very, very successful. He could have done whatever. A lot of the other Bin Ladens were legitimate business people. I guess they were, but they weren't terrorists like uh, like uh, Osama Bin Laden was. He wanted to fight against America. He viewed America as the great Satan. And um, so they took this plan in the 90s about the Bajointa plot, and they also wanted to crash planes in the buildings. One was going to be CIA headquarters. Others were landmarks, the World Trade Center, of course, which they hated the most, always came up as far as that goes. The original plan was for eight attacks, four on the West Coast, four on the East Coast. Bin Laden said, no, that'd be too difficult. The authorities would be on to us by then. we got to move it down to four attacks. We need to recruit muscle hijackers. There's going to be people that are going to keep the people, the planes, uh, the passengers in line while they, uh, while they hijack the airplanes. We're going to hijack airplanes that are big jet airliners, 767s, 20,000 gallons of jet fuel, so we can have the maximum effect as far as a terrorist attack. By early 2000, they had the teams in place. They recruited uh, hijackers and terrorists for what's called the Hamburg Cell in Germany. Uh, there were four hijackers, I'm sure you remember their names, Mohammed Atta, he was the ringleader, Marwan Al-Shehi, Ziad Jarrah, and Hani Hanjour. 
They went to Afghanistan. They had a talk with uh, in Bin Laden's camp in Afghanistan. They asked them, are you willing to die? Are you willing to die for this mission? They all said yes. They were radicalized. And they said, we're going to have a mission that's going to be the, 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 the number one, the biggest thing of all. Just be ready. They said, we're going to have to send you to America, and you're going to have to train. We're going to have four pilot hijackers and other muscle hijackers. So they made it into America in early 2000. Muhammad Atta comes in, starts training at Venice, uh, in, in Venice, uh, Florida, at Huffman Aviation. They start flying Cessnas, they start taking flying lessons. The other pilot hijackers come in, Marwan al he comes in, he trains at Muhammad Atta. The people at the flight school said they were very rude. Um, you know, Muhammad Atta was very unfriendly. Marwan al he was a nicer guy. Uh, of course, he's not a nice guy. And then uh, the third one was Zia Jara and Hani Hanjur. <coughs> These were all the pilot hijackers. They were training amongst us. This is what's very important. They were among us. They were not, they were, the person next door, whatever, what have you, they were training among us. They were taught to blend in. They were taught not to cause any trouble. So 2000 rolls in, 2001, they bring the muscle hijackers in through Newark Airport, through different airports in the country. There's 20 uh, muscle hijackers, okay? So the way it was set up is they had a final meeting in Spain. They were told what their targets, because they didn't want them to be told what was gonna happen because we could have unfolded. We came very close to preventing this. That's what the status part. We came this close to not having to have this day. They just didn't put the pieces together in time, unfortunately. But there were four hijackers. Um, they were told what they were going to do. Now, this morning, Mohammed Atta was on American Flight 11. He flew out of Boston Logan Airport, and that was the first plane that we all know to hit the North Tower of the World Trade Center. American Flight 11 was a 767. It had 21,000 pounds of jet fuel. He slammed the plane into the North Tower. He hijacked the plane about 10 minutes in, killed the pilots. Killed. They, their, their, their mission was to have a pilot hijacker, two muscle hijackers in the front to, to, to kill people and storm the cockpit, and then two muscle hijackers in the back to take care of anybody that's standing up. They sprayed mace in the cockpit of American Flight, or mace in business class. They stormed the cockpit, killed, killed the two pilots, they took over the plane when it was going on the Hudson River, made a left turn, and headed due south. Now, it was a day like today for 9-11, not a cloud in the sky. The reason why was you can see the World Trade Center from probably 50 to 100 miles away on a day like, like today. So they hijacked it. They kept flying down. Um, there were some heroes on board American Flight 11, Betty Young. She was a, a flight attendant, and she talked about we were hijacked. The hijackers were in 4B and 5, 5C. He, she was an early hero because she told the hijackers where they were. Flight 11 impacts the North Tower at 8.40, was it 8.45? Okay. Flight 11 impacts the North Tower. While this is going on, Flight 175 took off from Boston Logan shortly after American Flight 11. Marlon al and five and, and, and four other muscle hijackers were on Flight 175. Flight 175 heard the suspicion, a suspicious transmission from American Flight 11. You see, Muhammad Atta thought he was talking to the passengers, and you could hear his voice on the air traffic control saying, we're returning to the airport. Uh, remain sitting and keep calm. And he was actually broadcasting to air traffic control what he was doing. United Flight 175 reported, we hear a suspicious transmission. A few minutes later, United Flight 175 was hijacked over in New Jersey. They flew the plane. Obviously, everybody knows the first plane hit the North Tower of the World Trade Center. You can hear the air traffic controllers. Uh, they turned off their transponder on the plane. Why they did it is the transponder identifies your aircraft. When you turn it off, it's harder for them to identify you. So they took over the plane. Marlon El Shea, he flies one, Flight 175 at, I believe, 9.03 a.m. Is that correct? At 9.03 a.m. into the South Tower of the World Trade Center. That's what we all saw worldwide. There are a million different views as far as that goes. Now, while that was going on, there was another flight, American Flight 77, that took off from, from uh, Dulles Airport. That was flown by Hani Hanjor, and it went out over West Virginia, and the plane was taken over, and they flew it back. And there was a lot of speculation that the White House was the initial target for this. Um, if you ever look at the air traffic control, they're flying around in circles for a while. Um, I think the White House was hard to find. 
and they decided to go into the Pentagon. Now that's all open to debate, because that's what they've done as far as their interrogation and, and what they gathered. So that was the Pentagon, I believe that was 940, when the Pentagon was hit, and then of course Flight 93. Flight 93 was on uh, the runway at Newark <coughs> International Airport. It was delayed. It was delayed for a half an hour on the runway. The flight took off. Right when the flight took off is when Muhammad Atta slammed Flight 11 into the North Tower of the World Trade Center. So um, that took off, and uh, basically the, 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 uh, the passengers knew what was going on. The information at that time as far as the attacks uh, was going to happen. So they stood up. It was an uprising. Around Ohio, the plane was hijacked. Todd Beamer, we all know the story. I'm sure others are going to talk about it here today. Fought back. They had that information that the other flights, of course, they did not have that the plane was going in badly as far as the hijacking goes. I always think about that because I was in downtown Pittsburgh. I worked a quarter mile from the steel building. If you ever look at the flight path of Flight 93, you know they saw the steel building. And they could have easily deviated and crashed that into the steel building. But um, Flight 93 was Zia Jara was taken over and uh, the flight was stopped. So that uh, that's the, the basic as far as the four planes and as far as the hijackings on 9-11, I think it's important we all remember the history as far as that goes. Thank you very much. Thank you, Michael. We appreciate your uh, history lesson because it's so important that uh, it's not just what happened, but how it all came about. So I'm going to turn it over to uh, Mr. Uh, that was Pope. nerve wracking. Great job, Michael. I'm nervous. Here. You want to come? I can see it. Is that okay? Yeah. Thank you.